Mr. Morris? Here. Chairperson Mrs. Granado? Here. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative Mr. Justin Bianchi? All present. Okay, thank you, Ellie. I would like Haley Konashevich from Emerson Williams, grade three, to come on up to the front and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Haley. Holly, you want to make a motion here? Oh, thank you. Uh, I would like to um, move that. Oh, I'm sorry. I, actually, what I want to do is add an agenda item uh, for number 6B, which would be uh, we need board approval for a um, grant for a supplemental enhancement. I second the motion to add. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, any discussion? Mr. Emmett? Yeah, this is a, a request uh, by administration uh, for board approval to pursue a uh, grant uh, through the federal government, uh, approximately $66,000 for a uh, program at Weathersfield High School that will be run by our um, tech ed guru, uh, Sue Coco. Okay. Any other discussion on this? Okay. Do you want me to read the motion? Uh, we will on 6B, okay? okay. okay. Fine. All right, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that's on our agenda. At this point, Mr. Emmett? Yes, um, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome back. Um, I certainly don't like to start off on, on, a, on a sad note, but this evening I, I must. Um, yesterday, our longtime secretary um, at Weathersfield high school, uh, Cindy Pagliarello passed away. Uh, Cindy was a fixture at Weathersfield High School and was kind of the go-to person when any child came in uh, with needing a late pass or uh, that parent that needed to bring lunch or any type of cell phone or anything that a student forgot. Um, Cindy was the type of person that had a smile on at all times and um, she will be deeply missed at Weathersfield High School. So if you would please join me in a moment of silence in honor of Cindy Pagliarello, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Mrs. Granato. That's all okay. for this evening. Okay, to next, on, next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of our regular Board of Ed meeting on June 13th, 2017. Are there any corrections? Move to approve. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Those minutes are approved. Also, the approval of the minutes of the special Board of Ed meeting on August 16th, 2017. Some are there any corrections to those? So moved. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? So those minutes are approved. So is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that we do have a limit of five minutes. Good evening. Jamie Dirksen, 290 Wolcott Hill Road. I have three children in the Weathersfield school system. My oldest son is entering second grade at Charles Wright. My middle son is starting kindergarten at Charles Wright. And my youngest son will be starting pre-K three at Webb. I'm here this evening to voice my family and our school community's ongoing concern about class sizes at our elementary schools. In particular, the already large size of my son Nolan's incoming kindergarten class at Charles Wright. Currently, our kindergarten class sizes are 23 and 24 kindergartners per class. If you look at the common patterns of enrollment at our school, those numbers can and probably will grow larger with late registrations as well as people moving into our district. 
The alarming ratio of 24 four and five year old kindergartners to one teacher does not seem like an appropriate one, especially when you take into consideration students within the class that will need additional support. My family is fortunate that I am taking a few years off from teaching full time to stay home with our three boys. I regularly volunteer at the school and did so when my oldest son started kindergarten two years ago. My son's kindergarten class then was 23 to 24 kindergartners. Being in that classroom on a regular basis, I can attest firsthand the impact that a large kindergarten class has on the students as well as the parents. The classroom was overcrowded and overwhelming, especially for the kindergartners. One kindergarten classroom itself is physically much smaller than the other. It is much too small to house a large class size of 23 to 25 little active bodies and doesn't allow them much freedom in their movements and personal space. With the complete redesign of kindergarten, we have shifted away from focusing on social emotional development of our children and moved toward higher academic standards. We expect them to do so much academically, yet we are not giving them an appropriate teacher to student ratio that meets their social emotional needs. With larger kindergarten class sizes, this crucial social emotional component, which requires a lot of attention and nurturing, is what in the end will be sacrificed. Little kids thrive when they have a school environment that promotes positivity, flexibility, and individual attention. That's not possible with a large kindergarten class. Mm -hmm. Having larger class sizes leads to more behavioral issues, especially in the younger grades. My older son, Nathaniel, struggled with his behavior in kindergarten. It didn't take us long to realize that he was acting out because, quite frankly, he was trying to compete with his 22 other classmates for his teacher's individual attention. He's an outgoing, bright, inquisitive, emotional child. I love every single one of those qualities as they will serve him well later on in life. However, in an overcrowded kindergarten classroom, these qualities quickly became problematic for him. We worked with his dedicated teacher and amazing social worker at the school to help my son make good behavioral choices. It was a struggle for my son, and unfortunately, his self-esteem as a student suffered. With maturity and a smaller class size of 19 in first grade, my son thrived and became a model for his peers, both academically and behaviorally. Kindergartners are just learning how to behave in a classroom setting. We need to create an environment that focuses on their learning with positive individual attention and positive redirection of undesired behavior. This can truly only be achieved when there are fewer students per class with fewer distractions. Most behavioral issues in young school-aged children are linked to children seeking attention regardless of the kind they receive. Small class sizes have fewer behavioral issues because teachers are able to be more flexible with their lessons, have more time to build positive relationships, and spend time on redirection. These are all the things that our kids need from kindergarten. Obviously, we are well aware of the budget woes of our state and school district. However, we need to invest in the social emotional development of our young children. We respectfully request that an additional kindergarten teacher be added to Charles Wright. Moving forward, we would also like to see the Board of Ed adopt a policy that puts a cap on the number of kindergarten or K through two students per classroom. It is unfair to our children that they be placed in an overcrowded school environment. While the story I shared with you is very personal, its focus is one that is shared by many other Charles Wright families, as represented in the letter you received earlier this week. We all want our children to have an appropriate teacher to student ratio to better meet our young children's social, emotional, and academic needs. I want to thank you for listening to our concerns. Thank you very much. Good evening to the members of the Board of Ed and people here today. My name is Amanda Greenwell. I'm at 225 Knott Street. 
Um, I'm also here to speak to you about kindergarten class size. Um, Jamie has touched on many important points, and so I'll, I'll not reiterate so many of them, um, but I'd like to expand on a couple and maybe add something. Um, I'm a Wethersfield parent of three children. My oldest, Nolan, is going into second grade. I have uh, twins, Sean and Connell, who are going into kindergarten, and so for me this affects two kindergarten students. Um, they are very excited to go into this academic year. Um, I'm also uh, an educator myself. I'm a former high school teacher in the district of Avon. I currently run the Writing Center at the University of St. Joseph, and I also teach at the uh, Central Connecticut State University as well. Uh, I also teach pre-service teachers. Class size for me is an enormous issue in education. Uh, to me, class size can determine it's, it's immeasurable in some sense uh, what a smaller student to teacher ratio can achieve uh, for our students as they learn. And I believe that's true at all levels of education. I particularly think that in kindergarten, when we have uh, children who are learning to be students, who are learning about what education is in a setting that's beyond preschool um, and beyond daycare and learning how to be students. Um, you hear kindergarten teachers often talk to students about sort of how to use their minds, but also how to use their bodies, right? Mm -hmm. So in kindergarten and the elementary years, we're also looking at students just learning how to physically exist in spaces with other students who are growing and learning and want to play. Um, we have excellent kindergarten teachers at Charles Wright. They, with, with rigorous standards and a, you know, a really, um, uh, a rigorous curriculum, they also are encouraging our children to learn through play, right, and to learn how to interact with each other. Mm -hmm. And I just can think um, that having 23 to 25, and we could see more than this, right, enroll by the time school begins, I want those teachers to have the environment that allows them to do their jobs well. Um, and that's me speaking as an educator. And as a parent, I want my children to be in a classroom that allows them to develop as learners. So, you know, when I, when I think about this, um, this issue in our town and I think about class size and I think about, you know, being an educator and being a parent, I also think about, I know this, there's a domino effect whenever you make a change to a school year. And I know there are things you're going to have to consider as a board and, and to, you know, to talk to the principal of the school. And quite frankly, I really urge you to talk to the kindergarten teachers at, at this school. I can think of no better source you know, as you, as you consider this issue, then the teachers who are going to be working with these students, um, talk to them about who they know is enrolled in this course. Look at the class list. Look at the needs of those individual students, because there are already students, I am sure, enrolled who have special education needs and who have English language learner needs and <clears throat> other needs that I can't name right now, but are probably on those questionnaires that each of us as parents fill out before we send our students to kindergarten. Um, look at that information, think about that, think about equity in the town, think about class size in other kindergarten and lower elementary spaces, um, because this, this is gonna make an enormous impact on 50 young people in this town. And it's gonna make an impact on two educators who give everything that they have to their classroom. These are teachers you want to retain, you want to keep in town, you don't want to get, to, to get burned out in their jobs. They're, they're awesome. Our kids are awesome. I really hope that the Board of Education considers the long-term effect that this can have uh, for students entering kindergarten and the people who educate them. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, Ms. Dremmett, nope. you, oh, wait, oh I'm sorry, oh my goodness, <laughs> faster. <laughs> sorry. I was trying to be polite. Uh, hi, I'm Christy Salters Pednow, 15 Fairmont Street. Um, I am also here to talk about class size, and I think that Jamie and Amanda have um, really articulated some of the major issues. Um, but I am a researcher, so I always, when it's time to <laughs> make an argument, I always fall back on research. And so I just wanted to um, share some of the research on class size uh, that's available. Uh, so in preparation, I read two uh, literature reviews, one by the Center for Public Education, and one by the Brookings Institute. And both of those literature reviews um, came to a similar conclusion, which is that class size is very important, but all, uh, particularly under um, certain conditions. So here are the conditions where class size has the largest effect. One, grades K through three. 
So the earliest grades matter the most. Two, class size has maximum benefits when there are no more than 18 students assigned to a class. So as you heard, in Charles Wright in kindergarten this year, we are already well above that, uh, that limit. Third, class size is especially important for ELL minority and low income students. As you know, there's a large population of those students that are served by Charles Wright. So I know that there are a lot of difficult decisions that the Board of Education and um, uh, the superintendent need to make. I really think it's important to bring evidence to bear in making those decisions. I know that not, we can't have everything that we want, um, but I do think that class size is a, a particularly critical issue. Um, I also want to add just on a personal uh, note, I also had a child in kindergarten two years ago in that, um, that, that year that there was 23 and 24 in the class. And you absolutely cannot shoehorn that many kindergartners into a room. We have incredibly gifted kindergarten teachers, but they are not miracle workers. Um, and I, I think that asking them to teach that many kindergartners is asking for a miracle. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> You want to come on? Oh, yeah. okay. Come on up. Come on up. Say ditto. Yeah, right. I'm glad you're advocating. They're more well prepared than I am. Where's my speech? I forgot. My name is Michael McEwen. I live at 23 Flower Street. I have two kids at Charles Wright. Caden's going into kindergarten, and uh, Anika's going into third grade. And I would volunteer on Thursdays, and it was very busy, very organized, very crowded in her kindergarten class. Um, I saw the governor speak on the first day of school last year, and that was amazing. If you look at Charles Wright as far as the, the area that it's in and the state that it's in, I'm, I didn't come here to complain about this. I want to make sure that we get the right amount of kids in the right classrooms. But we, I think, as the school is falling a little bit behind. It's a little bit in disrepair. And as I was watching the governor, there we have an outside we have an outside trailer mm -hmm. that is being used. I don't see that in any other elementary schools. But okay, that's it, fine. Yeah, high crest. Yeah, they have one also. Yeah, high okay. Crest. I just want to make sure that we are doing the future residents of our town a justice by educating them properly. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any other Charles Wright parents? Come on up. My name is Michelle McDool. I live at 15 Flower Street in Weathersfield. I have three children. Uh, my oldest is in high school. I have one in junior high, and I have one entering kindergarten. Um, all the major points have been well, well spoken about tonight, but as a mom, one of the other aspects that I can just imagine the first few weeks of school is my child or any other child who may not be used to being away from um, mom or dad um, and just I can't imagine how those teachers have just one student who may be upset and taking away their attention um, from the rest of the class just one how they can manage 24 students of that age um, just being away for the, probably the first time for a lot of these kids um, but I wanted to show my support for the teachers. We have amazing, amazing kindergarten teachers um, who go already go way above and beyond. Um, but I'm also here um, just to voice the concern for these youngest, most impressionable, and most vulnerable of all of our students, our kindergartners. Um, with the class sizes as they are, um, some of our children are just four years old. Um, and they may feel scared or lost those first few days. And with the class size that big, some of our teachers, as well as they are, may lose and not be in touch with each of those children and their emotional needs um, those first few days. Um, just the safety of it, um, losing track of those students, I'm sure could be a possibility. Um, 
I know I, my oldest child was known to run away um, from the class at time to time and with smaller class sizes at that time the teacher knew exactly when and where all of her students were but I can't imagine having 24 25 students that the first couple weeks of school not knowing all of your students that that could be a possibility um, but as a parent and a taxpayer of this town I trust that you as a board um, and I trust our schools and I trust our teachers to always be our eyes and ears on our children and while they're away from us and also educating them um, but as we also have a duty to create a realistic and safe situation for our teachers to be successful in doing so but with the class sizes of this big I fear that we're probably setting up some amazing teachers for failures like was stated they aren't miracle workers um, so I ask you to please consider adding an additional kindergarten teacher to Charles Wright um, to meet the the best social, emotional, and educational um, needs of our young students. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Okay. Mr. Emmett, do you have any communication to share? I do. Thank you, Mrs. Granado. Good evening, everyone. Again, welcome back to the 2017-2018 school year. Um, this evening, Mr. Bushy will be providing you with an update on projects that have occurred over the course of the summer in preparation for the 2017-2018 school year. Uh, tonight on the agenda, you will see an action item related to the school calendar. Um, just want to make sure I explain to the public, we have a minor adjustment we need to make to our 17-18 calendar. This is based upon the fact that the state set the SAT administration on the same day that we have an early dismissal for uh, elementary conferences and professional development. When we provide the SAT, there are certain students that will receive uh, accommodations, including extended time. For us to administer the SAT on an early dismissal day, we would not be able to get enough minutes in the day to mm -hmm. offer the extended time option for some of those students that are eligible for it. So our proposal this evening is to slightly alter the calendar where it moves that half day out one day. So it's off from the SAT administration day out to the next day. And we'll talk further about that when that comes forward. I'm very pleased to report that the administrative retreat occurred last week. Um, we were together uh, most of the week, Monday through Thursday. We did a lot with regard to legal and legislative updates, school improvement planning, leadership development, and capacity building. Yesterday began the first day of new teacher orientation. This is always one of our favorites. Uh, we met over at the high school media center yesterday morning. Uh, we have uh, several new teachers who are replacements for retirees or folks who have left the district. Um, the orientation provides new staff with the opportunity to become familiar with the district and they are also supported um, in getting ready for seeing students on day one. Convocation will take place uh, at Weathersfield High School next Monday morning. Very much looking forward to that. We'll hear a, an address uh, from Mrs. Granado, um, a brief speech from myself. Uh, the most inspiring piece that I cannot wait for is an address by our uh, Weathersfield Teacher of the Year, Charlene Maddock, a science teacher at uh, Silas Dean Middle School. Very much looking forward to that. I want to get a message out uh, to parents. Um, I want to talk about transportation. Uh, I'm sure all of you in one way, shape, or form have had the uh, opportunity to deal with transportation issues in this district. Uh, I am very proud to report that uh, next week you will see a change. We have a new transportation company now in place. Autumn Transportation is now taking the place of Durham Transportation Services. Uh, currently, Autumn has all uh, drivers in place. They're currently doing dry runs, so you are going to start seeing the buses making the trips around town, getting the routes squared away. We have new buses, so gone are the days of the old, tired, many-year-old buses that we had. They will be marked Weathersfield Public Schools. That's an expectation of ours. Uh, in addition to that, with uh, Autumn Transportation, they are a local company based right out of Rocky Hill. So um, we have already had the owner and the uh, manager, the yard manager, in to meet with the administrative staff over the course of the summer. 
Uh, we set out our expectations. Uh, Mr. Kazaka, our business manager, along with myself, will be visiting the yard next week to set forth expectations of our drivers. So we're very excited and looking forward to uh, a, a new partnership with Autumn Transportation. I will say that I ask for your patience. Obviously, with a new company, we're certainly going to have growing pains. We'll be out monitoring routes as the year gets started, and we'll make adjustments as, as needed. But very happy to have a new transportation company aboard. Again, uh, earlier this evening, you already talked about uh, adding the agenda item with regard to the grant. This is a federal grant that we are pursuing. Uh, the reason that I've asked that it be added tonight is it is a grant that must be spent during the month of September. So we are currently in the running for it. We do need your approval tonight to move forward with that. So the state currently is processing it. We're hopeful that we get it. And then we have a grand total of a month to spend it out, the month of September. So that's the piece there. Also want to talk about um, the issue of the class size. You know, I sit here and I'm listening to parents talk about class size, and I feel the same exact way. And I strike that hard balance between low class sizes and the reality of the budget. So one of the things we've done over the course of the summer is the Board of Education has gotten a weekly update of class sizes throughout the entire summer. And class sizes, they, they're all over the place. Back in the spring, we had a major issue at Webb with the fifth grade going into sixth grade. That no longer exists at this point in time. We've had kids move out. The issue with Charles Wright is certainly real. Um, as of this afternoon, looking at the most recent numbers, the projection, currently I have 23 and 23. Those are hard, fast, they're registered, they're in there. I have two more in the pipeline, which would push it up to 24 and 24. So my proposal in terms of moving forward is, again, I don't have additional positions. We don't have them in the budget. So we're looking at adjusting from within. So my plan is to reduce the number of sections of sixth grade at Charles Wright from three to two, which would give us a total of 23 and 24 at sixth grade. Add a third section of kindergarten at Charles Wright. And that right now we're looking at 16, 16, and 16. Now, with that being said, I also want to segue into the budget. Uh, I don't know how many of you happened to watch the news on Friday with Governor Malloy's latest press conference, but here's the reality of it. Wethersfield Public Schools stands, and the town of Wethersfield stands to lose over $9.3 million in educational cost sharing funds. That's everything. That's everything we get. That represents a approximate 16% reduction in our operating budget. Now, I'm trying very hard to balance between not having the doomsday, oh my God, we're going to lose everything, and focusing on making sure that we're ready to open the school system. We are. We are staffed appropriately. We have everything together in terms of materials and supplies. We are ready to roll. But I have to be extraordinarily clear and upfront with you. A cut of $9.3 million is devastating. That will impact class size, that will impact programs, that impacts people. Um, I've talked about it already in the Hartford Current. I uh, met with Fox 61 yesterday. I've spoken with the mayor. I've emailed our delegation, which I call upon again to, to get together and let's get a budget passed. What um, we'll be talking about this evening as we talk further about our Finance and Information Committee meeting that we had just before this board meeting is looking at scenarios of reduction. Million dollars by million dollars. And it's going to be a stark reality here. Our expectation is high for our kids. And, you know, we've seen some great growth in our test scores. You talked about rigorous instruction at the kindergarten level. I love to hear that. That's exactly what we're striving for. We're striving not only for that, but we're striving for emotional support, social workers in every building. When I came in 2008, we didn't have a social worker in every building. They, they danced from building to building, and they got to emergencies when they could. So these are the types of things that have the potential of being cut. I need to make sure that I'm clear with you on that. Right now, we know that that number is not etched in stone, but it's out there, and we do need to look at that. So with that being said, uh, we are looking forward to starting the 2017-2018 uh, school year. We are ready to go. I'm proud to report that today at Silas Dean Middle School, I had uh, many seventh graders in 
learning about how to open their lockers, where classes are, um, getting along with each other, uh, cyberbullying, they had a session on that today. We will be having meet and greet coming up next week. That is always a huge hit. Uh, I had sent a school messenger message out last week talking with you about um, holding off a week on the teacher assignments. Our expectation is the teacher assignments will go out. Those letters will go out tomorrow. The only issue with Charles Wright at this point in time, obviously we have some other things we need to deal with. We have to deal with finding location. We wanna be close to kindergarten. I have an issue with furniture. Um, the reality is here, uh, as of yesterday, I enacted a budget freeze. All non-discretionary spending is held right now because we don't know where we're at. So we're going to have to be creative. Mr. Bushy sitting out in the audience usually is creative and will do the best he can to make sure that the kids have what they need. Um, but the reality here is this, I, I don't want to be all doom and gloom, but I also have to be realistic as well. Um, if, these, you know, if this cut happens, we're along with many other districts in this state of Connecticut, um, we, we've got a problem. We've got a big problem. So I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. So with that, Mrs. Granado, that's communications. Okay, I think thank you. Okay. <laughs> Next on our agenda are action items, and we have um, two. John, can you read action item 6A for us? Yeah, I just got to scroll down to it. Go we ahead. Don't have paper anymore. Move that the Wethersfield Board of Education approve a revision of the 2017-18 district calendar to include Wednesday, March 21st as a regular school day and designate Thursday, March 22nd as an early dismissal day for parent-teacher conferences and professional development in order to accommodate SAT testing scheduled for March 21st at Wethersfield High School. Okay, do second. I have a second? Any discussion? I think everybody had a chance to look at it. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6A passes. Polly, would you read motion 6B? Uh, move that the uh, Wethersfield Board of Ed grant, grant approval for application of the Carl D. Perkins Secondary Supplemental Enhancement Grant Application, RFP number 818, with a grant period of August 21st, 2017, to September 30th, 2017. The grant application is for $66,477. Okay. Second. Good. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, I, I just had a Go question. Ahead, Could you, uh, um, and maybe I didn't absorb it and I didn't quick, uh, but I just was wondering if you could explain it just a little bit more in detail. Uh, what I'm seeing here is next generation workforce how would we uh, spend it, that it is indeed um, we've worked there uh, we go. yes here, here she comes now <laughs> who was part of the process so exactly. exactly hi good evening uh, the supplemental uh, grant is a competitive grant uh, for those that applied there was a two-week window to apply so um, Sue Coco uh, and Tom Moore moved very quickly this summer essentially the grant application includes um, industrial equipment for our students in primarily manufacturing area, including a laser engraver, a 3D printer, and also um, an industrial sewing machine. It comes training for the teachers, and so that our students would have the opportunity to actually be working on industrial type equipment while in school, um, as we look at increasing the manufacturing um, opportunities for students. Um, so this grant really is about equipment, and as Mr. Emmett already announced, um, you have to spend money in about a month, which is really an interesting grant. Um, so this industrial equipment then prepares us to be a potential um, NASA Hunch school. Uh, there are only two schools in Connecticut that are current NASA, NASA partners. Um, and in order to be a NASA Hunch school, you would have to have this type of industrial equipment. Mm -hmm. So um, that is the kind of the foundation of this grant of step one, um, and then applying for our application with NASA. Okay. So what, what exactly, the, um this amount of the 66,000 would go toward uh, training and, um, and equipment for this year. Then if we became, or if we applied and became a NASA hunch school, uh, what would that entail? Does that ultimately, so, in, is that a grant to fund it or 
Is it something uh, we have to fund? Um, learning opportunities for student. And there's a lot of different ways you can implement that in with the, the student. Um, there are learning opportunities like we've seen for JETS and DECA and clubs, and um, it can be defined in different ways. Um, we have not talked in depth about those next steps. Uh, we have not committed to any funding. Um, but again, we can't look at that partnership unless we have this industrial equipment okay. that we've typically um, have not been able to afford. So that's what the supplemental grant offers us to grow that um, area of the CTE curriculum. So is that a, once we have that, uh, that equipment, then, um, th then the second step is to apply? Correct. As a school, so if we don't, um, if, if we're not if we a, don't, recipi a recipient of the NASA hunch or we're not, what, what happens with the equipment? Uh, we will be able to use it within a curriculum perspective okay. of our courses also. So okay. most definitely, it'll be offer a lot of opportunities for our students, whether we are accepted as a hunch school or not. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you very much. Sally, when do we expect to hear from the state? I know we're in the running right now for this. Um, any day. Hmm. Okay. Uh, on or around yesterday. Perfect. <laughs> okay. okay. Diane? Um, I would urge support of this. This is um, pretty consistent with some of the things we've been talking about in um, programs and services, opening up um, some of our learning opportunities to kids who might not be interested in college or might be interested in more hands-on mm -hmm. um, type of activities. So I, I would urge we support this because this is one of the, um, mm -hmm. I forgot which group was it that came to one of our last meetings. Was it the... Um, uh, they used to call them shop at home back. Yeah, tech ed teachers. The tech ed teachers yeah. and stuff. Oh, Unified Arts. Unified right, Arts. At the they, middle I mean, school. They mentioned <clears throat> some of this programming, but couldn't go forward because they lack this mm -hmm. equipment, the mm -hmm. laser printer and, and so forth. So I think that this will help both the high school and the programs at the middle school. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other discussion? Just a question. So we've already applied for this? and we're hoping to hear in the next couple days? Uh, correct, we have submitted the application um, and the application stated that given the summer schedule, we could submit the board minutes at a later date um, pending board approval, but the grant uh, ex um, states that the board has to approve the application of it. So um, they're aware that we're doing it at this time. Okay. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6B passes. Okay, tonight's meeting we have reports and discussions on first our budget update. Mr. Emmett? Yes, first and foremost, let's talk briefly about the uh, budget for 16-17. Um, we had a meeting this evening prior to the board meeting around the 16-17 uh, budget. Uh, as you know, uh, last year we ran a deficit for the better part of the year. In addition to that, we had in September the loss of approximately $46,000 of um, open choice grant money. Uh, we had the issue with the minimum budget requirement where we were underfunded by approximately uh, $240,000. On December 29th, we had the situation where the state, in an unprecedented move, reduced ECS to the tune of approximately 152000 uh, That left the net with the uh, minimum budget requirement at 88000 and change. We worked with the town to solve that issue, and we were able to solve it. Um, in January, when that ECS cut came in, I enacted a budget freeze where we significantly limited uh, the non-discretionary spending. Um, that budget freeze proved to be wise given the fact that um, we did run over budget in several areas, including special education. Uh, very pleased to report that Mr. Gazak, our business manager, reports that um, we actually finished the year in the black and will be returning to the town approximately $20,900. So that's the piece with regard to the 2016-17 budget. With regard to 1718, um, I mentioned it before. Let me get into a little bit more detail with regard to that in terms of where we're at. As, as I mentioned already, we are prepared and ready to go to open up on the 31st of August. But we also know that there is the potential out there of seeing cuts, whether it be $9.3 million or something less than that, but still significant. We have scenarios in place already through our budget process over the past year where we have a reduction of a million dollars and a reduction of a million and a half dollars. 
please understand that as it was to get to the budget where we were at with a 2.06% increase, um, we cut 500,000. That included a um, administrative position that is not being filled uh, through attrition and a half time, a full time position. Uh, we will have a retirement for next month. Uh, that position we're intending to fill part time. With that being said, this evening, the Finance and Information Management Committee charged us with coming up with reduction scenarios at million dollar increments. Um, again, let me be clear to all of the groups that do fundraising or rely upon um, the board budget, uh, DECA. DECA comes to mind, it's a perfect example. All of these groups that rely upon board funding, whether it be for field trips, whether it be for extracurricular activities, need to start thinking about alternatives. How will you fundraise in the event we can't support it? In addition to that, we have cut over the past two years, our increase in our budget has averaged less than 2% over the past two years. We've cut back on supplies, we've cut back on operations and maintenance, We've been limited with regard to even technology. Remember last year, we didn't hi, um, get any additional technology. So we're tight to begin with. And when you start talking about multi-million dollar cuts, you are talking about people. It's inevitable. And I go back to the parents that, that I listened to, very eloquent. I, your message was perfect, and I love the research as well. As a fellow researcher, I love that. But the reality is, if we have to cut positions, we're gonna to have to cut positions. So right now, we'll be starting off at million dollar increments. We're gonna go up to the $4 million mark in terms of reductions to see where we're at at that point in time. I would urge, and I'm not one that likes to play the political game. That's not me. I'd prefer to run the school district to make sure our kids have what they need to succeed. I would strongly suggest that you reach out to your legislators and, and ask that they continue to push forward on getting a budget in place. I speak for Weathersfield, but I know in talking with my colleagues most recently with Dr. Collins over in Newington, uh, second year of a 0% increase and the loss of approximately $11 million of ECS monies. That's difficult. Um, and I can go on and on from Rocky Hill to Berlin to Cromwell. Um, everybody is facing this. So this is the reality that we must face. But in the short term, I uh, assure you that we will have what we need to get the year started. Um, there is a lot of additional information that we're going to need to come together with. And obviously for us, it's going to be imperative that we communicate with you. So we'll be utilizing a variety of different methods from having information out at open houses, which are coming up very shortly, uh, PTO meetings. I'll be looking to meet with WSPC representatives to get the message out. We'll be utilizing our television studio to get the message out as well. Um, I tend to use school messenger, but I, I've learned this evening that people hang up on me when I do school messenger. I can't believe that. So we want to make sure we use multiple means of communication so that... I just heard that. <laughs> <laughs> we want to use multiple means of communication to make sure that you're in the know. And the reality of it is this. Everything is up in the air. There is no hard and fast number. We really need our leadership at, at the state level to come together and, and come up with a solution so that school districts can run effectively and we can provide our kids with what they need. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment. We did have the finance committee meeting before we met tonight and we decided that we didn't want a doom and gloom message brought out there, but we need to be prepared. Um, and all of us are you know, distraught over these kind of cuts, but we, need, we do need to be prepared moving forward. Anyone else on budget? So can we move on to our summer facilities update? Mr. Bushy. Thank you, Michael. Good evening, folks. Uh, hope your summer was well. Uh, before you, I, I know, I'm sure you had a chance to read what uh, was in your packet for Friday. I'll just go briefly through, through all the different schools that we have here. One of the biggest things we got done this summer was we were able to catch up on our work orders um, that, um, kind of got stuck in the lurch here a little bit. So uh, uh, most of our backlog has been taken care of the, you know, the little things that we weren't able to get, get, get taken care of. Uh, and that's for all schools. Uh, what is Field High School? Um, the project is 99.999% done. The, the, um, uh, the last thing that's going on now is the rough screens are being put up 
for uh, uh, to cover the equipment that's on the roof. And uh, I can see that uh, happening here within the next three weeks. Okay. We're probably about two thirds of the way up now. Um, all the punchless items have been taken care of, so we're, we're kind of moving into closeout. Uh, the middle school had a little problem with the uh, media center and uh, some, uh, a few broken pipes that was taken care of. The right, uh, media center was uh, recarpeted and we're moving forward. Emerson Williams um, is probably the biggest uh, uh, thing we have here over the summer. Uh, we have two separate projects going on there. One, the, the redoing uh, of the gymnasium uh, due to the failed floor. That right now is probably at 90% complete, and I'm looking for absolutely total completion here within the next week. Um, it's looking very good. Um, everything is coming into, coming into play the way it should be. Uh, we had a capital improvement project to replace the rest of the carp, get the carpet out and replace it with uh, 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 vinyl composite tile. Uh, the, all the classrooms have been addressed and right now they're probably, um, and actually as of five o'clock tonight, they're probably two thirds of the way through the hallways. So I'm looking forward for them to uh, be finished with this by uh, tomorrow evening, in which case we can take and get our furniture back into the classrooms and make ready for the kids for uh, uh, for Monday to uh, come in for the open house that they have. Have so the teachers I, been able to set up their classrooms there? Uh, most most have. I oh, have good. a few that have not on on the east side, uh, Miss Granado. So, okay. Uh, uh, but, but there are. But everyone has been in. We've been able to get them, you know, kind of through the building, kind of. Walking through a lot of furniture still in the hallways, but uh, uh, but that's probably the the worst building that we have as far as you know moving forward and getting that getting that okay. completed. Um, the the Charles Wright School uh, between Charles Wright and Hamner School, we had two asbestos abatements going on. The uh, both art rooms, the floors buckled, and we had some serious problems there with trip hazards. Uh, uh, the floor was asbestos laden um, uh, tile, so it had to be removed. It had to be removed under, you know, un under abatement. I can report that that is done. The new tile is down, and the rooms are back together, and they're ready to be uh, ready for the kids to come back uh, next week. So, um, Highcrest School. Highcrest School is is uh, the Actually, the PTO stepped up and, and uh, purchased lockers for the sixth grade uh, pod area. Huh. Uh, those have been installed. Uh, the, the last finishing touches uh, went in today. I have a couple of damaged ones, but that that's not that that'll be taken care of. And uh, uh, it's a new a new thing for one of our elementary schools. So it kind of touches on the highlights of uh, of all our buildings. Uh, uh, I'm sure you may have questions, so please yeah, ask. I have one, Fred, about the creation of new sensory room. John, I'm very excited to see that. Yep, over at Highcrest. Yes. Uh, the purchases, actually, um, the uh, school psychologist made a move to another room to allow for that to happen, and we made some purchases to a sensory room. Excellent. Great. That was the, that was the, just take some moves around. We had to move, move it from one end of the building to the other end, but uh, uh, to make it work. Janet? Uh, Mr. Bush, can you explain a little bit about um, the tile issue that we had at Emerson? Um, I, obviously, I know what happened. I'd had to explain to quite a few people that in the Emerson Williams district what happened, but can you elaborate as to why we had to have this issue? Which, which, which one, ma'am? Uh, the I, tile at Emerson. Uh, had to I, the the capital project? No, nope, the I'm sorry, at the in gymnasium. the gymnasium. Yes, please. The gymnasium. The 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 infrastructure of the floor failed. There was moisture within the floor that just uh, that is what's known as a slab on grade. Okay, meaning that concrete slab is is abutted to the ground. Um, there were voids in the floor that caused moisture to to build up. Over the years, some of the, the um, materials that they use to level the floor off, they use a gypsum type material, which is not concrete, is more a, it, it's not a cementous type material, it's more of a, uh, 
chalky material. It does coagulate. It does harden very well, and it, in some spots, it does. It, it is okay to do that. But by putting a, a rubber floor down on this, and this we went through this the first time that we had this done, and had had uh, um, had readings taken uh, on the floor to ensure that these you know that the readings were good and they were within the pr the proper parameters for laying the floor down. Um, we found that we got a little bit more of uh, moisture within there and that some of the patch material that was not put on while when the floor was installed two years ago, but patch material that was installed many years ago actually lifted and caused the bubbling of the floor, which I'm, I'm right. sure that you've seen and, and some members of the board had seen. So this wasn't a contractor issue, correct? This was not a contractor issue. This was, this was kind of a, a, a over the years type, type of thing. What, what we did here this time, uh, we actually took that whole layer of floor off, probably almost up to between, between I would say, three quarters of an inch to almost two inches of flooring material by hand. This was taken up. Uh, there's no other way to do that. Um, and re jackhammered, re poured with a cementous material, not a gypsum material. So concrete was put down on the floor. The leveling material was put on top of that, so we have a nice level surface for, uh, uh, um, for the rubber floor to be installed. Uh, again, you're probably at you know, seven eighths completed for that floor. Some lines may have to be painted. Uh, we will be able to open the gym up um, on the first day of school. I think that we may be minus a couple of lines, but we'll, we'll take care of that over, you know, in the ensuing weekends. Thank you. May I ask, excuse yep. me, Polly? follow up on that? Um, so basically, the, uh, uh, this, it, to follow up on, on Janet's question about it being a contract, um, a contractor issue, so none of this was reimbursable. This was not a problem uh, with when it was installed, when it was reinstalled or repaired. Well, when it was reinstalled, this this, this actually went as a uh, um, as a request to Kerma uh, uh, for you know insurance uh, uh, reimbursement. Oh, okay. So and we did, did get we did get full approval for this minus our our uh, our, deductible. our deductible. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it was not under any kind of warranty no. or anything. No. Like no. That. The warrant the warranty had actually been up for this floor. They made some minor repairs. Oh. We you know we went through a, a period of minor repairs trying to get this uh, 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 trying to get this taken care of, but they did not adhere. So we had to go. Ended up having to go this route. Okay. Thank you. Kevin? Um, regarding the high school and the pool, um, I understand there's a delay for the starting blocks. There's a delay from the manufacturer. There is. There is. Now, would that, um, I know the old ones are still in place. Correct. So there, would there be any interruption for the um, swim team? Absolutely none. None. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, they're almost a, uh, um, just to coin a phrase, of plug and play. Um, whatever is there now, they they get unbolted and rebolted. So it's it's not a it's maybe a half a day that it'll take to do that. And I will make sure that that happens. Um, we have over the the weeks time during the during the day, we have a, a couple of days where where the curriculum is not uh, uh, used in the pool. So I'll make sure and try to stagger that and make sure it gets done there. And I do believe that in my last conversation, maybe four to six hours to get everything done. So I, you know, I'm I'm pretty confident we can get it done at one shot. Thank when do they do? Ian? Uh, I do not have a date as of today. I've been speaking with them almost on a daily basis. <laughs> we we did have an issue trying to get the logo between the between the eagle logo and and the W. Uh, the proper, how, how can I say this, uh, proper pixels, I guess. Uh, what I send them, they 
tried to blow it up. It wouldn't. It didn't really mirror the image of what I sent them, so that was no good. Uh, and almost daily here for the past uh, week, I've been sending them different renditions of uh, uh, of our logo, of uh, of our W, of our colors are all set. Absolutely navy blue, gold on the on the uh, on the eagle's beak, uh, and you know, and a white outline. Uh, it's just the uh, yeah navy blue, <laughs> navy blue, folks. Please, <laughs> navy blue. But uh, uh, kind of come back red, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> you know they're gonna come back red. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> But in any case, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get on, uh, you know, keep on this, Ms. Fitzpatrick, to make sure that, uh, you know, we try to get them in, in, in due time here. I, you know, I understand they, we do start this Thursday with, uh, and the pool is filled. It, it is ready to go. It is heated. It is chemically balanced. So we are, you know, we are good to go. Uh, the record board is up. The, you know, a few other peripherals that we needed to do there are, are, are taken care of. The only thing that has not been done is the, uh, the old record board because I was unsure whether that was to come down or not. Uh, Mr. Maltesi has indicated that it should come down, so we will uh, uh, take care of that. Fred, if you could also mention, I know during the course of the summer, we had these state-of-the-art lights, and we had one bank that has already failed that we had replaced under um, warranty. I noticed when I was in the pool yesterday, not swimming in the pool, of course, but just checking <laughs> to see progress, um, we have another one that appears well, we, we to have a balance have, that's gone We actually back. have three. Okay. We actually have three. We have one, one that was repaired. Um, one that's now starting to blink again, and one that's very dim, which I think that is, is going. I have an email out to the, the uh, corporation. It just comes from California. Uh, I'm trying to see <clears throat> excuse me, whether or not parts are local, and I can actually get these. If, if, I, you know, if I have to keep ordering these things and have to wait a period of time for, for you know, uh, to have them shipped in, what have you, uh, I am going to look to purchase to have something on hand in case something like this happens. Mm -hmm. um, these are, um, we've been considered, um, just, just another <coughs> FYI here about, about these lights. There's nowhere in the, uh, in the country that has these lights outside of college campuses. This is the first high school that these were installed in. <laughs> um, they actually reached out to me to see if they would, you know, could we do a, like an expose of this? And I said, well, I says, you know, we're, we're trying to wrap our summer up here. And when I, I says, to, in order for me to do that, I says, I will have to reach out to Mr. Emmett and to the board to make sure that, that we want this type of exposure. But, for a price, Fred. <laughs> Uh, well, for, for a price, price. absolutely, yeah. because you know I need to pad, I need to pad my budget a little bit here, Miss Granado. So, yeah. but in any case, that that was uh, you know I felt that was a good thing. But I I think we'll be good to go. Uh, hopefully, I get the parts to fix the light that's that, that's bad now before uh, uh, before the kids start here next week. So, okay, great. Any other questions? I I had one. Yeah, the, uh, Emerson floor. Do we have a reasonable expectation that the new cementitious underlayment is going to be waterproof enough so we don't have this problem. It's absolutely you. because a uh, moisture mitigation, after they poured the uh, cementous material on top of that, moisture mitigation of, uh, uh, of an epoxy bound type of material was poured over the top of that. So it's just like sealing it at 100%. At okay, and it's gone from, from, si from north to south to east to west went underneath the uh, um, the stage just a little bit to catch the lip where the uh, where the floor is and we have two alcoves that uh, were not done before in the original and I made them go into those two little alcoves here going up into the stage area uh, to take care of that too so uh, when they did pour the floor it was, it was a very glossy finish there they actually had to rough that up to put the glue down to lay down the uh, 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 the material Anyone else? Oh, I, I just wanted to ask you, and I noticed that um, we had, um, y you installed two water coolers, one at Hammer and one at Emerson Williams, that had been uh, 
donated by PTOs. Did, was there another one at uh, an earlier time or last year? It, was it Highcrest where the PTOs? PTOs have stepped up. We, we, we've had these uh, just a little historical. Uh, yeah. uh, PTOs have stepped up after they've seen what, after uh, um, our administration has seen what has been put in at the high school yeah. uh, for bottle fillers right. for the children. Cool. And uh, they, I, obviously they're not budgeted for. I can't just right. go out and do these. So the PTOs have actually stepped up and said, you know, if we get these, and I said, well, you know, let me, uh, what do you want? How many do you want to do? And let me go to my supplier, you know, and if I go and I say we're going to do three or four of these, five of these, I, I'll be able to get, a, you know, a, uh, uh, a little bit of a mass discount for them. PTOs stepped up at, at, at Highcrest, at Webb, at Hamner and at uh, Emerson Williams to install these. These are all installed, they're all paid for by the PTO and obviously my, my staff installed them. Yeah, I, I did want to mention that because I, th I think that was absolutely a wonderful gesture on that their part and also um, at Hanmer, or I'm sorry, at Highcrest, mm -hmm. installing the, uh, the uh, or donating the lockers for the sixth graders. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that, a, that's, uh, that's something that, that, that they that really the PTO that, came up with. That we yes. can count on them. Thank you. One other thing, just just to, uh, it, it, this is something new. This was something new to me, and even Mr. Emmett, um, the web parents uh, wanted to get into a uh, different type of, I call a dodgeball, I guess, and it's called a Gaga pit. <laughs> and if you all don't know what a gaga pit is, please please Google it. Please look at it. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a uh, it's it's a wall. It's an octagon. It's an octagon shape 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 um, um, play area uh, that I'm gonna put wood chips in, and they, they have a ball and they throw the ball at each other and they hit them and you're out. And then this one, you're I don't understand the game, but. They, they, they love it. It is they pretty neat. It. Mr. Emmett kind of wit witnessed it because we have uh, we have our, uh, our our Y program over at Hamner School, and they uh, um, uh, they have a portable one set up there where they play. So uh, I'm sure you know we're going to have this at the Webb Elementary School, and I'm sure we're going to see it expand out to some of our others. So. Please have a look when you get a chance to run by we website. We're actually yeah. looking at it right now. <laughs> oh, there you go. We're not going to be all millennials, but we're all right. Oh, good. <laughs> we're cutting technology. <laughs> so we do, uh, you now we got so excited looking at We have one? Is that what you're saying? Uh, there, there, I, I believe that the, uh, that the material is, was, um, uh, the town actually stepped up and did the, the, the preparation on the ground. And that's been taken care of. It was shipped uh, through, uh, through the PTO mom that I'm dealing with. It was shipped Friday. Uh, we should see it on site maybe tomorrow or Thursday. And actually, uh, PTO folks are going to uh, put this together. Great, great. So. Very nice. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else for a question for Fred? Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to the new year. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, and we're also going to have a report on projected class sizes. Mr. Emmett, do you want to take that? Yeah, and we'll I'll have be comments? happy to take that. I had mentioned earlier with regard to uh, the situation at Charles Wright. Um, across the rest of the district at this point in time, things look stable. Uh, I want to uh, also speak to the uh, Hanmer kindergarten sections. Uh, we currently have three. Um, they have been running uh, low throughout the course of the summer. Um, we currently have a total of five students in the pipeline. In addition to that, I have two open choice kindergartners coming in that were coming into Emerson, so I've moved them over to Hanmer to maintain three uh, sections at Hanmer. Uh, right now we project out at 15, 15, 15. Um, throughout the course of the district, um, at this point in time, once we level, um, we will have no more than 24 kids in a class. Um, obviously, we'd like to see that lower, but as I mentioned before, we do not have funding to add additional teachers. Hence, you know, obviously, we're reducing the number of um, sections at uh, Charles Wright to get that additional kindergarten teacher. Currently, right now, we have 16, 16, and 15 with those three sections. Moving to the two sections is 24 and 23. 
it's certainly not optimal. But at the same time, looking at the difference between sixth grade and kindergarten, we see kindergarten is, is, is the bigger need at this point in time. I think this also um, speaks to the need to kind of further our discussion around the issue of looking at redistricting. You know, we talked back in June about the process of um, developing our 10-year capital plan. It's very interesting to see the number of students in the enrollment, you know, looking at Webb Elementary School. Um, that sixth grade class currently is 24 and 24. It's not optimal, but you go to kindergarten at Webb, and r currently I've got 15 and 13 with four in the pipeline. So we've got two sections across each um, grade level at Webb, and in certain cases we've got, like Highcrest, for example, we've got three sections across the board. And I'll be clear with you, with the number is at Highcrest, Highcrest is on the cusp in kindergarten, quite frankly. But right now, in terms of the priority, it was clear with the projections as of this afternoon, we were looking at 24 and 24 on those two kindergarten classes, and it just, it, I can wholeheartedly agree. And I want to reiterate again, as I mentioned with regard to the budget, we look at these significant cuts. Inevitably, it's going to be classroom teachers and the class size is going to go up and it's going to become a moot point. Um, beyond that, we certainly want to take a look. We're not, you know, we focused on the elementary level. At the middle and high school level, we do have some sections that are well uh, subscribed. Certainly our uh, unified arts um, at the middle school, our world language, we have several of those classes that are quite quite large, and then at the high school we have uh, courses that are uh, very, very popular, and um, so we're monitoring there as well. But the hard part is, you look at the class sizes that you have, you love to be able to add teachers, and it's just, it's unfortunately not that easy. So, go okay. ahead, Any comment, Diane? Yeah, what, you know, when I look at Hamner, they have three kindergarten classes, 14, 13, and 12. Mm -hmm. Why can't we take the 12 kindergarten teacher, bring her over to him or her over to Charles Wright, that would still keep Hamner's kindergartens below 20, um, rather than, you know, reshuffling the, the sixth grade. I mean, to me, that's, those are pretty low class sizes. What, as, as I had mentioned, Diane, I have several kids in the pipeline, so these are kids that aren't on the list yet, but are in the process of info snap. So I've got five at Hanmer that are going in. Plus I have the two open choice from um, Emerson to reduce the Emerson um, kindergarten numbers. Currently I'm at 20, 19, and 19. I'm gonna move those open choice kids over. The reason I'm moving the open choice kids over at the kindergarten level is they have not yet established, so we can move them to any school at this point in time. So that's the, the mantra behind that, that particular piece. Um, we have uh, other kids, and as I mentioned at Webb, we have four kids in the pipeline. We believe two of those may not be coming in. We have two others that are in the process now. Um, and this information is as, as of this afternoon. The, I mean, the, the one thing that concerns me, I'm glad we're doing that for Charles Wright, because I've seen those classrooms, and I agree with the points made by the speakers here tonight. I... Um, the other night after a meeting driving up Knott Street and I go down Goff Road, between um, the Charles Wright District and that edge of Webb's District, I counted over 20 houses for sale. And these are starter homes, so there's going to be more kids coming into those, to those schools. And I concur. I mean, I think, you know, I know people hate the R word, but... When you look at Webb, which I think is the biggest elementary school we have, mm -hmm. only having half of what some of the other schools have, I mean, there's a lot of, it looks like there's a lot of empty rooms there. Um, and, you know, it can take some of the burden off of Emerson and Highcrest specifically. Mm -hmm. Those two schools were the feeder schools when Webb was created. Um, and in its day, when Webb first opened, Webb had the, the largest population. So I, I really think we're underutilizing a valuable resource there mm -hmm. at Webb. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Matthew? On that topic, I think Diane makes some excellent points. The speakers, obviously, I think we all concur. <laughs> Is there a method that maybe hasn't been used in Weathersfield in particular, but allows us some flexibility that's not one of these full born redistricting, but where, I mean, I could see, I feel like if we were to do a full redistricting, like it works for a year, you get all everything nice, and diversity's good, and then, you know, two years goes by, and you get a bump, you can get a, you know, just a birth bubble, and 
any one of these areas and then moving on and the rest of it. So is there a way to have a district with sort of the neighborhood schools concept but provides you a little bit more flexibility than the rigidness of, of the line or <coughs> maybe parents get an option in some way? I don't know that how it would work out, but I but if other top ta other towns that have kind of school districts sort of similar to ours and if there's some type of a flex program that we could put in even to give you some options, maybe parents some options, maybe it's you know with some type of recommendations and approval by the superintendent to allow that type of flexibility that we're talking about, especially in the short term if redistricting takes to properly do it, takes a year or two or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're talking about a 10-year plan, which is talking about different types of constructs with buildings and so forth, mm -hmm. and space needs. So it seems like in the short term, maybe to help some of our bubble issues that we consider some type of a flex process. Now, can, can we get, because the last time we redistricted was when Web opened, mm -hmm. and that was the first class that went into Web the kindergarten class is the class that's graduating this year, the class of 2018. They were the first kindergartners in their neighborhood schools. Um, and I remember, I mean, there was all sorts of controversy because the sixth grade, a lot of sixth graders had to get pulled out of High Crest to Webb and Emerson and so forth. Um, but there, if I remember correctly, there are parts of the Emerson Williams district in the High Crest district where one side of the street went to Webb and one side of the street went to Emerson and the same at Highcrest. Like I think Thornbush was split half and half. Ridge Road. Um, Ridge Road. Half of Ridge Road went to Highcrest. The other side went to um, Emerson. So it would seem to me that as we look at these, that th those are the three schools that we, and maybe we do a not a full-blown redistricting but we look at you know the neighborhoods and so forth as to how maybe some kids can be taken from Emerson and Highcrest you know those kids that are on Thornbush or you know those that area of town um, and down um, Collier along Prospect Street and the same with Emerson rather than you know dragging Charles Wright and Highcrest into it if there if there's kind of like a pseudo or mini you know re redistricting plan kind of to lessen the impact because it is very emotional especially for fifth and sixth grade parents um, although the kids didn't seem to mind it was the parents that liked it the most <laughs> um, you know making that tran transition to a, a new school and it is you know when you've been with other kids for six years and then have to move but to kind of lessen the pain if, if we look at those, um, you know, how we do that. I mean, there are kids that live two blocks from Webb on Prospect that go to Emerson. Like, John, I think across the street from where you live. I know all we those kids. went to Emerson people. and the kids across the street went to Highcrest. I mean, the yeah. line's got to be drawn somewhere. That's, yeah. that's why. Well, yeah, that's why I'm saying. I mean, there may be ways to just move those lines ever so slightly for us to get a better balance. Or maybe there's an area near those lines that's called like a flex district, you know, and so you, normally the parent can choose. And no, oh, you don't want to get no. into choosing. <laughs> or there's some process by which, you know, we can, yeah, we can it's, help. It's it's like you're either all in or you're all out. <laughs> um, but it will get, might give some flexibility, at least to the district, to even up class sizes. So, so, so maybe, it maybe if we could get a map. I don't know if there's a map. Hmm. I remember there was a map when they did it back in... Um, was it 2005? Five. I, I was on the building committee. I think I remember. Well, it's this class, so 12 years. Yeah, 2005. 2005, 2006. Okay. Anyone else for discussion on class size? I thought um, I just make a comment. The parents who came up for Charles Wright for the kindergarten were spot on. That's exactly what it's all about is that K through two, K through three years. And th this board focuses on small class sizes. We communicate it to the administration. We also have a budget, which, uh, you know, I roll my eyes because it's a very challenging budget. But all summer we did look at the numbers. We watched them very closely, which I think is our responsibility. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
We'll go on to our Board of Ed meetings held and have, let's see, Kevin talk about a perfect segue on our facilities meeting. Yes, Matt, back in June, um, the Facilities Maintenance Committee met. Um, we had representatives from Collier International make a presentation to the committee. Um, they work with school districts and municipalities throughout the state, uh, a construction management firm. Um, they went through a slideshow and basically discussed uh, what they do, um, what, what they offer to various districts in terms of uh, construction. We talked about new factors with our own elementary schools, looking into the future, uh, you know, the, the pluses and minuses versus new construction versus renovation. Um, and, and that sort of thing. It was an excellent discussion, very eye-opening about um, going through our own high school renovation, kind of what would we do differently um, when looking at our elementary schools. I know we had a speaker earlier today that said they, some, like including Charles Wright, are a little weathered. Um, so we're looking into that the future. That was polite. <laughs> uh, <laughs> looking into the future there. Weathered. Um, um, and uh, also during that meeting, uh, Fred, as he, did earlier and kind of gave us an update of what he would be <laughs> would be doing through the summer and today we got a little capstone on what was completed through the summer and and part of that if I can just add it was a great committee meeting and um, it, we talked about a 10-year plan which mm -hmm. is a, a, a great way to look at things is well for the town and for the schools but fascinating work they were doing thank you anyone for any discussion on that okay so Janet, would you do on our Memorial Day Parade Committee? Yes. Um, it was a very successful parade. Um, we honored the Fidalco, excuse me, um, association, and we had a couple of the dogs um, walking with some of the um, now owners of these beautiful animals. Um, it was, I enjoyed walking the parade. I enjoyed seeing the students that were marching and in the you know, side streets, seeing some former teachers, current teachers, and it was great. The kids enjoy that. Um, I know that I personally enjoyed seeing some of the teachers that my students had, um, I'm sorry, that my kids had. Um, so it was a great day, it was beautiful, um, and we had a great time, and it was fun. You know, every year it turns out to be better and better, I think. Um, and uh, I think the best part was the essay was a great essay this year great essay they're great every year i just think they get better and better yeah. it was great okay thank you and um the correct council met on june 21st the meeting was held at the correct headquarters in hartford and correct is to remind is the capital region education council and weathersfield is one of the 35 towns that make up the council the meeting was the final meeting for the 2016-17 school year, and the discussion was very typical for most of the year that we had, was the state budget. The lack of state budget also impacts CREC as they operate the CREC magnet schools and project choice and many professional development opportunities for the member towns. Um, the individual town representatives were discussing both options of acting now or waiting for a budget to come from the state and then implementing any necessary changes. So you can see things didn't change over the summer. The next meeting is next week on September 20th. Okay, and we have um, school projects and building committee. Michael? We uh, had a very difficult time getting a uh, quorum throughout the course of the summer. Um, however, we were able to successfully uh, come together and meet on the 14th of uh, August. Again, the roof screening uh, was discussed. Uh, in addition to that, we're looking at the finances. I remain adamant about um, needing to get that last batch of equipment, uh, technology equipment. Uh, in addition to that, Mr. Bushy is looking for some additional furniture. Um, when this project was developed, we had a, uh, a projection of 24 in a classroom. As I mentioned earlier during my uh, report on class size, we have some classes that are uh, subscribed above that. So Mr. Bushy is looking for some furniture. Um, at this point in time, financially, the project looks to be um, okay. Uh, we'll be coming back together again um, to uh, see what's left in the budget after the uh, roof screens go in. Uh, in addition to that, I know uh, there was a variety of different landscaping items uh, that needed some significant attention. So um, I was at the high school today and I know that the uh, contractor was there actually re yeah, redoing. So there's definitely uh, that component. 
Um, not related to the building committee, but I certainly want to uh, give a shout out to the town of Weathersfield with regard to the uh, turf field and Catone Field. Um, the football team has been on it. Um, we're still doing some final work on Little Catone Field where the new softball field is, but um, it's gotten rave reviews thus far. And uh, I have to say over the course of the summer, the architect that worked on this project was absolutely spot on in terms of holding the um, contractor accountable and making sure that this project got done. So um, that is gonna be a, a showpiece, beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, facility. Great. Okay, thank you. And our special board of ed meeting on August 16th, Diane? Um, this is a special ed, uh, special ed, a special board meeting held in accordance with the um, tenure teacher statutes. This was a termination hearing regarding a tenure teacher. Um, over the course of a year, various hearings were held. Um, a independent hearing officer reviewed the case, made recommendations that the individual be terminated, and the board discussed it at the hearing and endorsed the recommendations of the independent hearing officer and moved to um, terminate the contract of the tenured teacher. Okay, thank you. And our finance and information um, management committee meeting, which we had this evening. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, and thank you, um, Mr. Emmett, for giving most of my report. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, we'll see you all in September. Thank you. Okay. All right, so we do have meetings scheduled. We have WEC, which is Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative on Monday, um, September 11th, 2017 at 4.30. School Projects Building Committee on um, September 11th at 6.30. And Finance and Information Management Committee on September 12th at six o'clock. Okay. Excuse me, Madam Chair, on this uh, WEC, or uh, maybe Matthew, you can help me out here. Sure. This WEC meeting on September 11th, that's their annual meeting, right? I believe it is. Yeah, okay. Oh good, they didn't say that, thank you. I think it, I think it, yeah. I think okay. it is on the, re the report. Okay. Okay. I think it is as I don't, well. I mean, I would reserve the right yeah, to be 20% wrong on that, but I think you're right though. 20%. Well, 20 okay. <laughs> All right. I, think oh, I, think I know right. it was, yeah, I thought it was coming up in September. We need humor I, now. We need okay, humor. Try. I'll double check that. Thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else? That probably did sound funny. <laughs> is there any unfinished business? Okay. Again, if there's anyone wishing to make comments, please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that your time is limited to five minutes. Okay. Okay. Is there any board comments? Anyone have any board comments? Diane? They, um, I got some emails over the past couple of days about computer science classes at the high school, the AP and so forth, that they're not gonna be offered? Yes, at this point in time, that's on hold. Wait, how come? Budgetary. Okay. Because what happens is we have a teacher that's already teaching five classes and he'd have to move up to six classes and there's a stipend involved in that. So we're holding off. And how many kids are impacted by that? Mr. Moore, 20. Can we, can we get all the numbers from the middle school and the high school too? Sure. I meant to say that yep. when we were there. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Can I have a motion? May I have make a motion to move to executive session for the purpose of discussion, discussion regarding the superintendent of schools evaluation? Second. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that concludes the public part of our meeting. Thank you for coming and for watching. Good night. Yeah.